start vlogging earlier today, but I have just felt so run down. But I wanted to give a little intro into what I'm gonna be filming tomorrow. You can probably already tell by the title that I'm getting a laparoscopy to see if I have endometriosis. And I kind of wanted to talk about how I've been feeling because I've been watching, I've been like kind of binging a few vlogs of people getting this surgery um, just because I've been like anxious and wanted to mentally prepare and like watch people go through the same thing that I'm about to go through. And half of me was very comforted by it, but then the other half of me was like, I still don't feel like I can relate to a lot of these people. Um, I feel like I'm kind of feeling differently than they're feeling. I didn't really see vlogs of many people who were like, I don't know how to explain this. Basically, I'm like so unsure whether I have endo or not. And I feel like most people who get this surgery are pretty convinced that they have it and they're just kind of getting it to confirm it and to take it out. I like I have no idea if I actually have it or not. I have all of the symptoms for it but they're all like this is hard to explain. They're all minor enough that if I got out of surgery and they told me oh we didn't find anything I wouldn't be that surprised but they're all major enough that they impede on my life um, a lot. They're all major enough that I've been going to doctors and gynecologists and specialists about this um, for a few years now trying to figure out what my symptoms are. And if you know anything about endo, you know that it's very hard to diagnose. Most people who have endo get diagnosed nine years into having it because um, it's just like not something that all GPs like know much about, I guess. Um, and so not all GPs like think to go down that route of looking for it. I'm trying to think the best order to tell things in, but I guess I'll start with my symptoms, um, which I'm definitely gonna forget a lot of them. But the main symptom that like is debilitating is cramps. And like, I know a lot of people have cramps, but when I first got my period when I was 13, I actually didn't have cramps for the first year. And then when I turned 14, they were absolutely debilitating. Like I was completely bedridden during my period. And I had my period for eight days in a row. I think most people is four to five. I had mine for eight days in a row every time I got my period. And my cycle was 21 days long. Um, so instead of having three weeks in between my periods, three weeks was the length of my cycle. So I only had two weeks in between my periods because my period lasted for over a week and then my cycle was three weeks long. So it came, it started every three weeks and lasted eight days. Um, and I, from my understanding, I feel like most people's cramps are just the day before their period or the day before and the first day of their period. My cramps from the very beginning have been there every single day of my period. So before my period, they would come and then they would last every day of my period. Um, and so that was super debilitating. Um, and at that age, I just decided to go on birth control because that's what people did for their cramps in my head. So I have been off of um, birth control since then and have not looked back at all, except for the fact that my periods are still extremely, extremely debilitating and painful. And I have taken myself to the ER a couple of times when um, I've been having cramping that just really did not feel normal, like cramping that really, really concerned me. But if you know anything about endo, you know that it doesn't show up on ultrasounds. I think sometimes it can if it's causing a huge blockage. Um, don't quote me on that, but endo doesn't really tend to show up on ultrasounds and even MRIs and blood tests. Anything that they were testing me for, um, nothing showed up, so I went home as normal. My period came again recently and it was the same situation where I was just in so much pain to the point that I was getting concerned again. If I if I could somehow know for a fact that maybe I was just one of the unlucky people that has painful periods, I would feel like it would suck. I hate them. They're so debilitating. I can't like function during that time of the month, but at least I wouldn't be so like worried and concerned. But it was the, you know, anxiety and 
concern that caused me to reach out to a specialist. So actually during that painful time, I posted a Hail Mary on my Instagram story. And I'm not the kind of person that like talks to my Instagram story or like writes out big messages and posts them on my Instagram story. But this particular day I was feeling so fed up and worried. And so I posted all of my symptoms on my Instagram story. You know, when you have that much pain, it can make you feel dizzy and nauseous and like the pain goes into my legs. So my legs get really shaky and weak. I have extreme fatigue when I'm on my period, which again can kind of be considered a normal symptom. But my fatigue is so intense that it causes me to like have fever dreams like I feel like I fall asleep like constantly fall asleep and I feel like I hallucinate and then wake up like I'm just in and out of sleep like feeling so foggy TMI but like going to the bathroom on my period is very painful as well sometimes I have cramping when I'm ovulating again it's so hard because on a small scale all of these symptoms are very common and normal but on a large scale they're not and like you hear some people say oh all of that's normal and then you get frustrated and then you hear other people say it's not normal it's not actually normal to have pain during your period to where you can't function like something underlying is wrong that you need to figure out blah 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 and then that's concerning as well like i've just for the past nine years been so like unsure of how seriously to take myself. So I, I posted that Instagram story and I got quite a few people telling me that it sounded like endo. So I made an appointment with a specialist, went and saw him and he confirmed with me that yeah, none of the testing I had done previously would show endo anyway. He was like kind of confused and frustrated why my doctors were giving me all those types of testing with my symptoms. When he heard my symptoms, he said it sounded like I um, definitely needed to like get this laparoscopy to see if I had endo. And he also mentioned um, adenomyo adenomyosis, something, the cousin of endo, he said. It was a really interesting experience, that first appointment, because I had been used to not being taken seriously by doctors in the past and having to constantly like, assure them that my symptoms were like extreme enough that I was concerned and that I knew those were normal in other people but like something didn't feel right. You could go into a whole conversation about how as women um, sometimes your pain isn't taken as seriously. So I was like really used to having to convince doctors to take me seriously. And then when I went to this endo specialist, immediately as soon as I rambled off a few of my symptoms. He was like, yeah, we need to get in there and see what's going on. And instead of being so relieved and thankful that someone was taking me seriously, my brain went the opposite direction and I immediately started spiraling and being like, wait, but what if I'm a hypochondriac? Like, what if, what if, what if, what if he's gonna perform this surgery and nothing's gonna be there? What if, like, I'm just dramatic and what if I'm just a baby and I can't like handle this pain that maybe is normal for other people. So then I started telling him all the reasons that I thought he shouldn't give me the surgery. Like I was like, I started contradicting myself and I was like, okay, but I don't have pain outside of my period. And he was like, yeah, that's like normal. You could still have it. And I just kept listing these things like, but but what if blah, 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 like, do you still think I might have it? And he kept being like, yeah, yeah, I think we definitely should look. And it just sort of became this thing. I was talking to my sister about it and I was like, have you ever seen that meme or that tweet that's like, when you're leaving the grocery store and you have to pretend like you weren't stealing anything even though you aren't stealing anything. I was like, that's how I feel. It feels like when you have to pretend like you have all these symptoms even though you have all these symptoms. Like I started almost having imposter syndrome about my symptoms. And because surgery is the only way to diagnose endo, I was getting really in my head about like, okay, the only reason I'm getting this surgery is because I'm telling him something that's making him want to give me this surgery. So it's kind of like in my control, like what I'm saying is resulting in me getting surgery. So if I'm exaggerating or being dramatic or just being paranoid, me getting unnecessary surgery is my fault, you know? And I have never really heard anyone talk about that in all of the endo videos that I watched. Um, and it, 
it honestly might be because their symptoms are stronger or they just don't have this like internal battle that I do but like I that's all to say I really don't know if they're gonna find it or not and that's like really scary I'm really scared that they're not gonna find it I'd rather them find it than them not find anything a so that I'll have an answer to all these symptoms I've been having but b so that I can feel validated in my like pain and symptoms and so that's kind of like my anxiety about this whole thing I honestly don't really feel that anxious about the actual surgery I've had surgery before I've gone under anesthesia before I'm not really too concerned about it but that's giving me anxiety is just like the results and I feel like if I wake up and they tell me they didn't find anything I'm gonna feel really guilty for some reason and I know I shouldn't but I'm just like I'm just worried about the feelings that that could bring up if they don't find anything. Other thing I was anxious about more so than the surgery itself is the bowel prep. Ugh. I had to eat a low fiber diet for the past three days. They need to clear out your bowels completely because they have to look at them. Like that's one place that the endo could be growing on. So they have to um, be completely clean so that they can see everything. So I've been on a low fiber diet. I had to start fasting at 1 p.m. today. And also at 1 p.m. I had to drink my first sachet of bowel prep. It is gross. It's not as gross as I thought it was gonna be. I've been anxious about it all week and it's not actually as gross as I thought it was gonna be but it did make me feel very nauseous and it's 7 p.m. and I still haven't gone to the bathroom so now I'm anxious that it's not gonna work but in a few hours from now I could be laughing at myself for saying that but it's going fine I have to drink another sachet of it in like an hour oh it just gives me anxiety because the instructions say that you can get like so dehydrated and weak and dizzy and cold and all that stuff I'm just not looking forward to that feeling but all in all it's honestly not as bad as I thought it was gonna be probably because I'm not it's not really working yet but drinking it wasn't as bad of an experience as I thought it was gonna be I'm about to do it again and then it'll be done the lighting's horrendous but I just turned on the lights so you can see a little bit better I just went to Woolies I'll show you some things that I got I got these giant pairs of underwear because they say that you bleed like your first day of your period for a while after the surgery and because you have incisions people were saying that like waistbands are just really uncomfortable so I got these super high waisted and I got them like three sizes bigger than my actual size just so that I don't have to worry about it being too tight or uncomfortable over the incisions and then I just got like overnight pads like these giant ones I you can come for me but I'm I'm not gonna with tampons at like I just when I'm in bed I just want to be as comfortable as possible and tampons make my cramps worse I don't know if you can relate but I know some people feel gross wearing pads but you gotta do what you gotta do to be comfy and then I also just got a bunch of snacks to bring just to, like I don't know if they're gonna give me food right after so I just bought a bunch of snacks that I can bring um because I will have not eaten for like over 24 hours at that point so I'm gonna be hopefully hungry maybe nauseous but hopefully I can eat something and then yeah I'm just gonna bring comfy clothes people were saying that they didn't want waistbands on their incisions but I don't have like a nightgown or anything so I'm just gonna have to deal I was watching a few videos of people show what they brought in their like hospital bag or whatever and some people really went all out so maybe I'm I don't know maybe I'm under preparing Maybe I'm over preparing, I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be fine. That's really all I'm bringing is like snacks, comfy clothes, period products. I literally don't know if I'll bring anything else. I feel like it'll be fine. I'll let you know. I'll keep you updated if I wish I had more stuff. The other thing is I don't know if I'm gonna stay overnight. They haven't said anything about me potentially staying overnight, but other people have had to. I don't know, I'm not planning on it, but maybe that'll be a thing. I don't know, I feel like the more videos I watch about this surgery, the more I feel like I'm going into it blind because I I'm like realizing that I don't really know what's going to be happening. OOTD. Let's go. I was planning on filming more today, but I'm just so run down and the pain in my chest and shoulders from the gas that they like pump you with is gnarly. I didn't think it would be this bad. Like my 
tummy isn't even bothering me that much. It's just like up here so much pressure. It's like driving me insane. But um, so I'll give all the details in another clip another day. Um, but they found endo and adenomyosis. Still don't know how to pronounce that, but they found it. So I'm happy about that. I have answers. I'll catch up with you soon. Good morning. I am very excited to make my first smoothie bowl in four days, which I know is not a long period of time, but for me it is. Doing that low fiber diet made me realize that literally all I eat is fiber. So I'm very excited to be able to eat normally again. Here are what the bandages look like. So they only had to do three. So there's one, two, and then one down there is the third. Sometimes they have to do a fourth over here, but I guess they didn't have to for me, which is nice. Sometimes they only do two, but I had to do three. And I have to leave the bandages on for like a week, which is gonna make me look like such a pick me when I'm at the beach in my bathing suit with my bandages still on. Days. Guys, it has been a minute since I checked in. It's been a week since I got my surgery. And um, because I didn't really feel up to vlogging as much as I thought I would, I feel like I need to do a full recap right now. So I've got my journal with all of my points and my coffee and ready to chat about it. So I feel like last time I properly talked to you, I was in the middle of my bowel prep routine and I was so anxious. And now I'm on the other side of it. So. I thought I would share. It took quite a while for it to actually start working, but then once it started working, it did not stop working. And it wasn't, it was like gross, but it wasn't as scary as I thought it was gonna be. I thought I was gonna feel really dizzy and have like stomach pain. I didn't really feel like sick or anything. It was just like kind of a chore to have to keep going to the bathroom. Yeah, I won't give too many details, but I do just want to ease your mind if you have this surgery coming up and you're as anxious about it as I was. You'll get through it. It's really not that big of a deal at the end of the day. The other thing I didn't expect was to get so hungry. Like I was starving and I thought because of doing the bowel prep and just being in the hospital, waking up from surgery, I thought that I would just be kind of nauseous the whole time and not really have an appetite anyway, but I was starving. Like we were driving to Brisbane at like 5.30 in the morning and passed a Taco Bell and I was like, I would do anything to eat that Taco Bell right now. Like I was starving. We got to the hospital at 8 a.m. I checked in and then um, they took me back or took CJ and I both back into another waiting room and we waited there for probably like a half an hour, not too long. And then I went back, answered some questions with one of the nurses and she took me into a different waiting room that CJ was not allowed in. Um, and I waited there for a solid hour. So I got to the hospital at eight and they took me back to start prepping me for surgery at 10, 15 maybe. So the waiting was kind of a long process. And if you'll remember, I didn't bring much with me to the hospital. And for the most part, I think that was totally fine. I don't think it's necessary to bring a whole bag of things, although you definitely can if it makes you feel more comfortable and prepared. But the one thing I do think you definitely need is to make sure your phone is fully charged or bring a charger and bring headphones because I was stuck in waiting rooms for like two and a half hours before um, surgery and they let you keep your phone the whole time, like up until you go into the operating room. And so you really kind of need something to do or something to look at to get your mind off of surgery if you're feeling a little bit anxious. 
and the only thing there was for me to do was look up at the TV and watch the news, which I was really trying not to do because there's a lot going on in the world right now. Right before you go into surgery, I feel like isn't the time that you need to be <laughs> educating yourself on all that kind of stuff. So I would just really look out for yourself and your mental health. Make sure you bring your phone and headphones so that you can tune everything out and do what you need to do to stay calm. I hadn't been like anxious for the actual surgery leading up until they were prepping me um, until they put like the needle in my arm and I was just kind of waiting in bed um, for them to come and get me I started getting really really anxious and like I said part of the reason that I was anxious beforehand was not necessarily because of the actual procedure but because I didn't know if this surgery was necessary. They don't know if you have endo until they get in there. So I was really worried that I was gonna wake up and they were gonna say, we didn't find anything. And then I was worried that I was gonna spiral into being like mad at myself for getting the surgery. I don't know. I know it sounds stupid, but I was just like really in my head about it leading up. When they were prepping me, that's when I started to actually get anxious about the procedure itself and the process. Um, I was freaking myself out about falling asleep. I was like, I don't remember what that feels like. What if like, I don't know. I was freaking myself out about being under anesthesia, even though I had been under like three separate times before, but I don't know. I think it was, like I said, being alone with no phone, no distraction, and then just, you know, getting moments away from them starting. I was just starting to freak out a little bit. And my nurses were not super warm. And I know you can't control what nurses you have, but that was just kind of a bummer to me because I was really anxious and I feel like anyone could tell that I was anxious. I was like really quiet and shaky and like, I, I don't know. I feel like it would have been easy for someone to be like, it's okay, like, don't worry, you'll be fine. Like the, we do this all the time. I don't know, something. But they were just like, go, go, go. Not stopping for anything. Kind of just not very warm. And so that wasn't really helping. But then the anesthesiologist, which in Australia they call an anesthetist. I think that's how they say it. Anesthetist. In America, we call it an anesthesiologist. He came in, talked to me, he was really nice. And then my actual surgeon came in and talked to me. And he made me feel a little bit better. He gave me a little pat on the shoulder. I think he could tell I was anxious. Um, and then, yeah, it was just wait until it was time to go into the operating room. The funny thing, I don't know if they do this all the time. I expected them to like wheel me into the operating room and like put me to sleep, but they walked me in there and then I had to like climb up onto the operating table myself, which just felt weird. I don't know why. It was like weird to go in the operating room and like see like the whiteboard of everyone's jobs and like everyone getting ready, everyone running around and I like am putting myself onto this operating table. It was just weird. It felt like I shouldn't be awake. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then I literally shed a tear like when I was laying on the operating table. I don't know why I freaked myself out so bad about going to sleep. I started like kind of crying, but I don't think anyone noticed because I like held it in right after that. And then the anesthesia, the anesthetist put me to sleep and it was not scary. It takes literally two seconds. I forgot how quickly you fall asleep. Like you don't have time to even start freaking out about like any weird feelings you're getting while you're falling asleep. Like they put the needle in or put the whatever. You just start to feel tired and then immediately fall asleep. Like it's such a quick process. So if you're worried about um, being under anesthesia, if you had it before, or if you just kind of haven't in a while and you're freaking yourself out about it, just know that like, I really wish I wasn't worrying about it. It's like the quickest, process and it's not it's not weird vibes it just you just fall asleep and then obviously I wasn't there for the actual procedure so I don't really know I don't have much to say about that until I tell you about the results later I woke up in a recovery room with a nurse right next to me I like as soon as I was conscious I was like, do you know if they found anything? And she, or no. Okay, this is what happened, this is what happened. I woke up, the nurse was by my side. We chatted for like a second. She like told me like, you're in recovery, whatever. And I was like, can I go back to sleep? I was so tired right after being woken up. And she was like, yeah, go back to sleep. So I went back to sleep. I had a dream that I asked the nurse if they found anything and she said no. And I was like, ugh, devastated. And then I woke up. And you're like, when you're awake right after surgery, you're still kind of in and out half asleep. So when I woke up, I didn't remember if that was a dream or not. I was like, wait, did I ask her 
or did I just dream that? So then I asked the nurse, I said, did they find anything? Did I already ask you this? Did they find anything? And she said, I actually don't know, but it does say here that they cut something out. So I assume that means that yes, they found something. And then relief washed over me and I was like, okay, that was a dream. I think they did find something that's great. I fell asleep again. And then when I woke up, I got so paranoid that that second time was a dream. I woke up and was like, yeah, they found something. And then I was like, wait, what, what if that was a dream? Did I ask her? Like, did I actually ask her? So I asked, there was a different nurse by this time. So I asked a third time and I was like, did they find anything? And she, she just said, I don't know, actually, I don't have that information. And I was like, oh my God, somebody tell me if they found something, you know, they did. And I didn't even find out until I got moved to the second recovery room, got my phone back and saw a text from the surgeon that he had sent me and my partner, CJ. So that whole first little while in the recovery room, I literally didn't know the results because I couldn't remember what was a dream and what wasn't. Yeah, so I got my phone back and it said, long story short, found endometriosis in deep in both sides of the rectum, which explains why it's painful for me to use the bathroom during my period. Endometriosis on both sides of the rectum, they cut that out. And then they also found endometriosis on my diaphragm and um, they like burnt that off essentially. Cause you can't, or maybe you can, but he didn't want to cut he doesn't like to cut endo out of the diaphragm because if you like puncture a hole in your diaphragm, then you have to get like a respiratory surgeon, all this stuff. And so he, there's like a laser that they use to essentially burn it off. And he showed me a photo, like a literal live action photo of him burning it off. And it literally looked like a blowtorch. It was so crazy. The other thing is that they also found adenomyosis. It is so hard for me to wrap my head around what the difference is between endo and adeno, but um, he showed me a photo of my uterus and what it looks like from the outside is a bunch of gunk on your uterus that shouldn't be there. I think some people have like really inflamed, like huge blown up parts of their uterus. Some people just have like growths on top of it. I'm, I'm only describing what it looks like to me. I have no, I'm not speaking in medical terms, but I have a photo of mine. And essentially if you Google a photo of a uterus, it just looks like this like pink organ, but mine has like white, it almost looks like mucusy. Sorry, this is gross, but if you're watching this video, you probably wanna know every detail. So I'm telling you every detail. If you look at mine, there's like white, it basically just looks like white gunk all over my uterus, um, which essentially is adenomyosis. And um, I think it's one in five people who have endo also have adeno. And adeno can cause really painful periods. It can cause fatigue, which is one of my main symptoms um, around my period. And it can also um, cause implantation issues, like implantation failure when you're trying to get pregnant, which for me is the scariest part. Um, endo, you can cut out. Adeno, I think really the only cure for it is to get a hysterectomy. And so they obviously don't do that unless it's really, really bad and they need to. Um, but there's like not much you can do about it besides just like taking measures to prevent it getting worse. <sighs> yeah, those are my results is that I had or ha I have endometriosis, but they cut out what is there so far. Endo continues to grow throughout your life unless you suppress your periods through the pill, marina, like any type of hormonal birth control that stops your cycle and stops you bleeding, which I don't know how much of this I'm gonna share moving forward, but I have had horrible experiences on every type of birth control I've tried. That's another thing that's hard for me to grapple with is like what I'm gonna decide to do moving forward. Anyway, then when I was in that second recovery room, they finally brought me food, which was a glorious moment. They just brought me rice crackers and cheese and tea, I think, and it tasted amazing. And then um, left the hospital at like 2 p.m. or something. So it was kind of quick, eight to two, and then got home at like 5, 5.30, something like that, and was just on the couch for the rest of the day. Um, I was out of it, I was tired. As for the pain, by far the worst pain of this whole process was the gas pain. Um, they pump you with gas to like kind of blow up your abdomen so that they can see everything better. And um, they like warn you of this before, like it's, a, it's kind of common knowledge that you wake up with pain. Um, but the pain is, the pain's not like in your stomach, the pain is in your chest and your shoulders. It's like from so much pressure from the gas 
you so much pain up here. And um, lying perfectly flat made it a lot better, but when I sat up or stood up, it just got worse and worse and worse. And the more I talked, the worse it got. So I was kind of like dead silent for the rest of the day, just lying down, because um, it, it was pretty gnarly, it hurt really bad. Yeah, that was the dominant pain for the next like three days was just waiting for the gas pain to go away. But the best thing, this is what I've heard in my experience, the best thing you can do for the gas pain is to keep walking. If you just keep moving as much as you can, it'll kind of move through you quicker, which is kind of tricky to do when the only position you're comfortable in is lying perfectly flat. I didn't have much pain in my abdomen to be completely honest. Um, I was definitely babying myself and I think if I would have just resumed life as normal I would have felt in pain. But after I left the hospital I didn't take a single I didn't take a single painkiller stronger than Advil when I got home. Um, they gave me painkillers but I didn't take a single one of them. So it was really all things considered pretty minor and nothing to be worried about. I'm sure everyone experiences pain differently and it's different for everyone. I'm sure it depends where you got endo cut out of. I'm sure it depends on so many things but let me be an example of a positive experience that did not result in that much pain. It really pretty minor as far as surgeries go in terms of recovery and pain and stuff. The very next day after surgery, I literally went to the beach, just laid in the sun for a while with my friend, went back home, napped, and then went and had dinner with all of my friends. Like the very next day after surgery, I was feeling well enough to do that. And of course I was just like sitting the whole time. I wasn't like super active hanging out with friends or anything, but um, for me, I know myself and my mental health can go downhill pretty fast if I'm laying in bed not doing anything for days on end. So as soon as I felt like I could get outside, I wanted to get outside and like socialize and um, be with my friends. So that was definitely a surprise that I felt well enough to do that the day after surgery. Yeah, the next like entire week pretty much was one of the best weeks of my life to be honest because I am off work for two weeks post-surgery. I think they say one week before you go back to work but because my job is super active and I have to wear a harness around my abdomen which is like right where all of my incisions are, they told me two weeks. So I'm two weeks off work. I'm not supposed to be doing any insane exercise or productivity or anything like I had this excuse in my mind that like I'm allowed to just rest and do whatever I want and the weather was so nice my friends were off work a lot of the days that I was I spent every day going to the beach eating with friends reading like it literally felt like a vacation which has kind of taught me a lesson that maybe I don't need to wait to have a gnarly surgery before I give myself permission to like take breaks and like do fun things sometimes. Cause it kind of, it says a lot that my week post-surgery was like one of the best weeks I've had in a really long time. And then a few days in, I don't know if the gas pain going away just drew my attention to other pain or if the other pain increased after a few days because my, the like, internal part of my abdomen didn't hurt super bad, but my incisions started to really bother me after a couple of days. I was saying to my mom, I don't think that this is actually what's happening, but just to illustrate the feeling, it feels like I've been hunched over like this and my incisions healed like that. And now I have to stand up like this and they're stretching. Like it felt like my incisions were just constantly being like stretched which is like, I don't think that's what was actually happening, but that's the sensation that I was feeling. And like, anytime I would do like a little, a random little movement, it would be like, like a jump scare, like pain, just like feeling like it was like snapping a stitch open or something. So yeah, just baby yourself with like any movements that you do, even if you feel well enough like on the inside and pain wise, just baby yourself, take all of your movements really slowly because the last thing you want is to literally open an incision or just like really hurt yourself by, I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? And then two days ago, I went in for my post-op and that's where my surgeon showed me all of the photos of um, the endo and the adeno and him burning out and cutting out the endo and all that stuff. And he told me that I need to go get another internal ultrasound by one of like his 
doctors in his office to have a second look at the adeno. He wants a second opinion on it. He wants to know, or he wants to get a better look at how bad it is so that then we can figure out what the best plan is moving forward. So that's kind of where my next step is. Again, my kind of main concern is preserving my fertility as much as I can. But like I said, literally the last thing I wanna do is go on birth control. So I don't know where I'm gonna end up. It's probably gonna depend how bad it is and what they say at my next scan. But yeah, I'll share updates. I don't know how much I'll share updates about like fertility and stuff moving forward. Maybe I will, but I'm not really sure. But I'll definitely share updates about like the endo and the adeno and everything just like here and there on my channel. So I also got my bandages off and I'll show you. Like I said, I went to the beach pretty much every day after my surgery. So I have some gnarly bandage tan lines. I'm also in CJ's boxers right now, but that's where two of the bandages were. Um, they were like big wide ones. And then also one lower down here that I obviously won't show you, but this is how it looks. And then trigger warning if you don't want to see my actual incisions skip forward like 10 seconds or something but I'll show you in case you're curious so this one on my belly button I'll just show you looks like that there's like still stitches and glue and all that stuff in there but that's what it's looking like now which is pretty minor but I just have to keep them covered for a few more days yeah pretty stoked they're pretty small it's obviously a like closed keyhole surgery so I knew they were gonna be pretty little but my belly button does look different let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to keep talking about this on my channel, but for now, that's all I have to share. I hope that this helps someone or helps you just feel comforted and less alone if you're thinking about getting this surgery or you've got it coming up. I'll see you next week. Bye guys.